Greetings everyone, it's Anne. I hope you've all been doing well. Today I'm finally getting around to reviewing The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. This is book two in the Burning Quartet and I've already done a review of book one so I will link that up above and down below if you want to know what my thoughts are on that book. Um, first off, I want to actually give a shout out to Evan who managed to connect me up with Orbit um, who got me a finished copy of the book. I just thought I was going to get an art but I got a hardback completed copy of the book so thank you so much to Nazia from Orbit Books I am so grateful for my copy of this book okay so now let's get stuck into the review I'm not gonna lie this book took me way longer than I hoped it would have done I started it in late November and it's April now and I've, I've just finished reading this book it's not that I didn't enjoy it I actually did really like it and I think for me it is a 3.75 four stars out of five which is still a pretty good rating for me and I rated book one four stars out of five as well I did really enjoy it and I am enjoying this series so far but I'm going to get stuck into some of the points I want to make so for the most part this is actually going to be a spoiler free review just look out for the chapter marks on the video so you can see at what point the spoilers come in but I will give you some fair warning um when I get into the spoilery discussion of the video I just have quite a lot that I want to discuss uh, there was no way I wasn't going to do a spoilery discussion in this review. Now if we talk about the world building here I don't think that the author really added much to the world building he didn't expand it but what I think he did was add a bit more detail to what we already know. I think for me in some places it kind of felt like we were kind of just going from place to place which I personally don't feel moved the plot along a whole lot but because we moved around so much we got a little bit more of an insight into certain things and within the series we split time often between the like normal realm and then also the underworld so we got a little bit more fleshing out of the underworld we got a little bit more of an idea of how things work and how the fights happen over there and I think it felt like he was also setting up some plot points for the later books as well which I am really excited about if we are going to get more things happening in the underworld in the later books. However, I do think that where he perhaps didn't expand the world itself, he took the time to actually expand upon the characters that we have already met. We are still following Tao, and I know that Tao is a character that polarizes people. Now, to be really honest, I mentioned in my first review that, or the review of the first book, I didn't really mind Tao too much. Like, I can see why people find him annoying, and I get it, I think he is an annoying character, but in book one I completely understood why he was the way he was. He had this revenge plot, it was all consuming, it was what he wanted to get done and it made him make stupid decisions. Did I agree with those decisions? Hell no. They were annoying a lot, okay? I can't lie. I can't lie. And I think that in book two we get, we kind of still get the same towel, if not as much. It's kind of dampened down a little bit. But to me, I I kind of felt like the changes that happened in Tao weren't intrinsic, so they didn't feel very genuine in his behaviour. To me, it kind of felt like because he had certain responsibilities in this book, he couldn't go off and do things because he had other people to think about. And I just think that if he didn't have those responsibilities, he would still be making those rash decisions. And there were certain points where we saw the old, same old towel coming out, which I kind of led me to believe that he hadn't really properly changed. And I think in book two, I kind of was less understanding of his behaviour. And I was more on the... Um, towers annoying kind of camp. I did enjoy that the author decided to give more of a personality to the other characters and he gave them their chance to shine in the book. There are just a few side characters that he tends to highlight in the story. I do think that whilst they have their thing, like we have the one who is the strategist, I think that's how you say it. We have one that's the giant softie of the group. We have one that's the kind of the weirdo. But a lot of the times they kind of serve to be Tao's friends and we don't really know them outside of those kind of things that they have 
of those personality traits we don't really know much about them other than their towels bros i'm kind of hoping we get a little bit more expansion as the series goes on and we kind of flesh those dudes out because you do kind of really love the side characters i don't know if you're the same as me but i i personally kind of love some of the side characters more than i like tao so i do really hope to see a little bit more of a personality added to those guys but we do i think end up liking them a lot more in book two anyway so with the characters in the book yes we get the the main characters who you do have a affinity for and a strong bond to but I think a point that carries on from my first review was that I am not too fond of the portrayal of women in this series. I'd mentioned it in book one and I kind of made a point to say that I I feel like they were women in this book were underutilized because this is a matriarchal society but in book one we don't really hear from any woman and I get it that we are following Tao and we're following all the, the guys training in the army and whatnot fine but all of the women hold positions of power we have women who look after different fives and whatnot and I'd made a point to say that we could have actually I think that was a missed opportunity because we could have had a split perspective now obviously for me it's a bit of a personal thing whereby because there are a lot of fights it can feel exhausting and I think it would have been cool if we had split this pers perspectives and followed women in the citadel we could have had the political maneuvering on that front and then we could have also had all the fights going on in the army on the other front and I think it would have broken up the book and gone away to sorting out the pacing of the book as well so it doesn't feel just fighting all the time with this book we get an introduction to more women the only woman that we met in the first book was really just used for exposition but we get introduced to a few more women and honestly they are largely unlikable and not really stand out in the book either so I'm really hoping that we kind of get that sorted out in the later books I don't really know if it's going to improve because I don't understand how we can have so many likable guys in the series but the women just fall so flat and it's kind of disappointing because we do get introduced to a couple of characters that I when they came in I was so excited but then they weren't utilized at all they just kind of stood there not really talking much with their introduction in particular considering that we got so much fleshing out of the guys I don't see why those particular women weren't fleshed out we have somebody else who was again kind of used for exposition and wasn't really built up on there's not really much of character building with the women in the story I know that um there are a couple of them who some things were done with but not all of them I, I think just as a whole the portrayal of women kind of fell flat for me personally I said it before and I'll say it again I think where Winter really shines in his series is his writing style I really enjoy reading his prose and I think he's an author that really knows how to capture his readers attention he has a way of writing twists and turns into his books that don't feel cliche they don't feel like you saw them coming they still really surprise you but it doesn't feel like he's writing surprises in for the sake of writing them I think that it's not really easy to do that and I think he does that brilliantly I also really enjoy reading his writing as well I think he's just a really talented writer and even though I mentioned that it's for me a lot of the times it's hard for me to pick the book up again when I'm reading his books but that's just a me thing because the fight scenes are quite exhausting at times but when I am in his world I am sucked in I am enjoying it I am turning the page I'm gasping at the end of chapters his chapters are really short so it's easy to kind of feel the momentum of the books I've mentioned before for me it's um his pacing I think can be broken up and we can perhaps get another POV that is more on the political side but again that's just a me thing the author still does a fantastic job in what he is setting out to do which is really capturing you and wanting you to keep 
in the world and keep going. Now, I don't think this suffered from second book syndrome. I think the author did well enough to have enough of a plot to keep you engaged for the second book, but also have enough material for what is going to happen later on. I think at some point it did feel like we were kind of meandering through um, this land and kind of like taking a tour and kind of going around and going back and forth. I might even say that it kind of felt that we were stalling a little bit, but once the story got going towards like the last fifth of the book it was really explosive and then things just moved really really quickly within the story. I think all in all I will say that if you did not like book one you're not going to like this one. It carries on pretty much straight away from the events of the first book and we are continuing with what we know. There isn't going to be a huge change and if you liked the first book then you're going to love it because you're going to be familiar with the story and the characters and the writing and everything else. To me it did feel like a setup for the explosive events of the later half of the series but I'm not mad at it. I still really enjoyed my time in the story and I'm going to continue on with the series because I think that there's a lot more to come and a lot more surprises in store for us as well. So I think it's time for a spoilery discussion. So if you haven't read book two or even book one it's now time for you to click out go and read the book and come back and join us for the spoilery discussion if you have read book two and you want to discuss spoilers then please just use spoiler tags so that we don't spoil other people we try to be considerate over here but we are going to jump into it now you have your warning so i want to leave off on a positive note so i'm gonna discuss the negatives first one why have we not gone into the colonization discussion of this world? I think it's a point that is really brushed off and not really gone into great detail because the Omehi people essentially came to this land and colonized it. And whenever we meet the Hedeni, I feel like I am supposed to feel bad whenever the Hedeni come and like mess things up for these people, but I'm not, because it's not your land. You don't belong there. You stole it from other people. And the only kind of inkling that anybody thinks this is bad is the queen who wants to right the wrongs that her people have done. But she's spoken about it with Tao. Tao doesn't really seem to have much of an opinion about it. He kind of listens to her and be like, oh my days, the history, because the queen is actually also used for exposition. I will come back to that point in a moment. But that's about it. And so I think that, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get any discussion on the colonization later. From what happened at the very end in that we had a shaman who came to warn them and try to work together. I think that perhaps it might be addressed later on, but I don't really understand why more people don't really notice that they are kind of the ones in the wrong here. We can have a whole thing about you no know, colonizers thinking that they're right and thinking that they have a right to land if they're able to secure it, whatever, whatever. But it seems like a very big point to discuss and bring up a lot if we're not going to really touch upon it. I don't know, what do you think? My second point and my second negative is the portrayal of women that I already discussed about. Now, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I was when we were introduced to Ramya and Oset. Ramya and Oset are the queen's handmaidens. So all, all the people know is that these two women or her handmaidens are docile. They're just kind of there to dress the queen, make her look pretty and just be her right-handed women and like help her out and do all the pretty cute things. But actually they're really awesome fighters and they're part of the Shadow Council who have been training the women which I know was a point I think I made in my first review or I didn't really understand why the queen's powers were hidden um, from the people and I really like the explanation that the author brought forth about that. However, we were introduced to these two awesome people and they weren't given any sort of personality throughout the story and it upset me so much because I cheered when these two awesome women came in and kicked butt and they just sounded so awesome and they were fighting along with the guys but nothing happened with them. They had no personality nothing and it's just such a missed opportunity because we have these band of brothers we have these bros who've been fighting in these wars and have seen so much together and then we are introduced to these awesome women as well who are able to cover their backs and fight for them and be on their side as well but they have 
no personality or nothing like that was such a missed opportunity why and i think that just kind of goes along with a lot of how the women are written in this book because it's just i can see what was trying to be done but i don't think the execution was quite there like again the queen isn't really a very interesting character she's just kind of there and again she's used for exposition when she gives Tal the whole history of the Omehi people and why there is this sort of class system put into place and all of their wrongdoings of the people were just given that exposition which is really cool I liked finding out about the history of the people but again the queen wasn't really utilized she could have been this really cool nuanced character and I think towards the end when we meet her twin sister who if I'm being honest kind of seemed like an interesting character but then we kill her off at the end so we're not going to really get much of her but we could have had these two polarizing people throughout the series we didn't really get that the queen feels to me like she's gonna have a Daenerys Targaryen arc and I'm gonna tell you now I hate it I hate it I don't want it I do not want that because we meet her sister Essie who we later on find out is the one that came up with the coup and she was actually in love with um Obasi Odili who was the one that killed Tao's father and who the one who Tao wants to kill so we find out from the sister that actually the queen is might not be all that she seems might have something like a little bit wrong with her or might be a little bit more vindictive than she's been made out to be and is a bit more ruthless and does things out of spite and whilst I think that might be a cool character trait I don't want a Daenerys Targaryen art from this queen we haven't really have much of a character built up for her and it kind of feels a bit I don't know a bit jumbled because are we supposed to ship her and Tao together which kind of seems like a thing that's kind of going to happen I mean they already slept together so I don't know I think there's going to be a romance thing there for them I don't know I have a lot of feelings about the queen and none of them are very positive and then we had the vizier who throughout the whole book was meant to be this sort of portrayed as this mean character but actually she was the voice of reason throughout the whole book and then she gets killed off it's like anybody who would ha have had even an inkling of a personality or just something to them was killed off we took so many chances with like the author takes chances with characters but it's the women that he kills off he killed off Obasi Adili but that that was gonna happen Tao was gonna kill him at some point so I knew he was gonna die but the chances that he takes are ones with all of the women and I, I just don't know how I feel about it some of you might disagree and think I'm being annoying I don't it's it's what it is but I think we need just you know justice justice for the women in this series that's my main gripe so I'm going to move on from that. Let's move on to some positive things. So I am so looking forward to where we're going to go with the bad guys. And I think from what I'm gathering, it's going to be a bit of the Hedeni, but mainly the Cull. The Cull for the, like a lot of book one and book two, it felt like Chekhov's Cull because they were mentioned so many times in the first two books that you just knew, you knew they were going to come and be the big bad throughout the whole, for the whole series. And so it looks like we're going to get them in book three and possibly book four because it sounds like from the history that the Queen told to tell, there's a lot there. So for me it seems like there's a lot of material but also one thing that I'm really looking forward to is whatever's happening with Ishihogo I want to find out like what's going on there because Tao's been back and forth to the underworld so many times he seems like he's messed up something there and we also have that big monster that he just can't fight and actually scares Tao and I'm glad because I think that with this the introduction of this demon that can beat Tao I think what Winter was trying to do is put limitations on Tao's power. I think that people have complained that Tao feels way too powerful. To me, his power made sense. If you followed him, you followed all of the fighting. He died a thousand, hundreds and thousands of deaths in Ishihogo. So the fact that he was so good at what he did always made sense to me but I like it when really powerful characters have limitations to their power and I think that with the demons now filtering through to the normal realm 
and this um demon that is able to defeat Tao and that he's scared of this is almost like his Achilles heel which I think Tao definitely needed because it's almost like he steps in and Tao is just able to like beat everybody and I think that this was a great move from the author to add this stop to Tao's power so I'm looking forward to these fights like I know that I said I find them exhausting but I'm still looking forward to them because Evan knows how to write a fight scene like his fight scenes are just so sick and you can't tell me otherwise they're always so exciting a lot's just always happening but it doesn't feel like the same fight over and over and over again like, I don't know how he does it but he does it really really well talking about fight scenes can we discuss that dragon fight towards the end of the book because how sick did that actually sound I can only imagine the visuals for that and imagine that in a tv show or a movie i think that would look so sick because you have the visuals of the like i feel like the way that they would probably do it if they adapted it to a tv show i'm i'm going on a tangent here follow with me if you want to i feel like if they did it on a tv show you would probably have like both queens on either end manning a dragon and fighting that way and then you also have the soldiers as well fighting there but the dragon fight just sounded so sick and I think the visual representation of the women doing their thing when we got women doing things and being awesome it just sounded so sick because I think the way Winter presents it is that obviously with the a lot of the magical powers are held by the women and then we have a lot of the guys fighting in the army cool and it was just like this this little glimpse of how like awesome the women could be in this book I just like I wasn't gagging for it. I wanted more. It just sounded so awesome. And I, I liked that then we had the dragon fight going on, the people fighting in like real time, Tao popping his head in and out, like splitting his consciousness between Umlaba and also Ishihogo. And then you also had all the dudes, like the pack fighting all the demons in Ishihogo. Like that whole fight scene was sick. And again, Again, I'm gonna shout out Evan's writing in this one because that whole thing was just an awesome sight to behold. Like I had so much fun in that fight scene. I think all in all, if I'm gonna kind of sum it up because I can honestly go on forever on all the spoilery bits that I absolutely love because I loved this book more than I didn't like the things I didn't like, if that makes sense. So I don't want you guys to think that I hated this book because I know that a lot of people or some people when they come on reviews done by women, they feel the need to tell them that they didn't read the book properly. I read the book just fine. It's just the things that I didn't like, I feel very strongly about them but don't let those negatives make you think that I didn't like this book I really loved this whole book I loved the whole series and I am so excited for the other books coming I just had these negative points that I'm really hoping that would be improved upon like we're getting baby steps okay we got more women in this book and I'm hoping in the next book they are portrayed just a little bit better but overall I think that if Evan fixes that whoo okay we're gonna have a series that is a force to behold so folks that was my review of the fires of vengeance by evan winter which is book two of the burning series do let me know if you have read the book and what your thoughts are whether or not you agree or disagree let's have a respectful conversation down in the comment section and i will see you all in my next video bye